Hi, I'm Rob Hardman and welcome Possibility Seekers to the Art of the Possible podcast. Today, we're chatting with international best-selling author Nicholas Boothman. This is actually an interview I did a few years back around Nick's book, How to Make People Like You in 90 Seconds or Less. And it's such a great interview because the fundamentals that Nick talked about back then are so relevant for today. So let's get into it. Enjoy. Good morning, Nicholas Boothman. Hey, Nick, Rob Hartnett. Hey there, how are you? Hey, good. Okay, uh, welcome to the uh, show. Great to be with you. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, is this your first podcast interview at all, uh, Nick? Uh, my first podcast interview, although I have to tell you that I was, I discovered only yesterday that my first book, How to Make People Like You in 90 Seconds or Less, has been the number two best-selling um, download from the, from the Apple site. Uh, for five weeks from uh, from the iTunes site was it uh, from the from iTunes the... site that I, I didn't know I'm 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 above the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> oh, well done! That's fantastic. That's fa- yeah. well. I tell you what, it's a great book. I mean, I read the book um, a few months a few months ago, probably six months ago now, and I just loved it. And I thought it was uh, really hit the spot. And so let's let's have a chat about some of the things you've spoken in that book, and also how to connect in business, which is the uh, the sure. other book as well. Um, one of the things you talk about in magazine ads, because you were a photographer, a professional photographer, was Ooh. having less than two seconds to connect to a reader in an advertisement. Um, tell us a bit more about that. How, how, do you, how does an ad connect in two seconds or less? Yeah, I, I, just, just so I, I can clarify, I was actually a, a fashion and advertising photographer for, for uh, about 25 years. And, you know, I, I can put it in even better terms that your, that your uh, listeners will understand. Here, here in, I'm in Canada, but here in Canada, we, uh, one of the universities in uh, the University of Dalhousie just checked to see how long it takes. In fact, let me ask you, how long do you think it takes uh, when you're surfing the web to, to, to be attracted by a website? Well, to me, I, I work on the eight-second rule. It's, they discovered it's a twentieth of a second. A twentieth of a second. A twentieth, and you can find the research at Dalhousie University in Halifax. Wow. Yeah, a twentieth of a second. We 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 make split second timing if something's uh, of interest to us. Um, we know, for example, from research done by the Harvard School of Health Sciences, that we decide how we feel about people in the first two seconds of seeing them. We we make instinctive appraisals very quickly, and it's done through one of our three brains. Um, Anyone who, who's, who's read Emotional Intelligence knows well by now that we, have, we actually have three brains and not one. One is the, the reptilian brain, which does, is completely involuntary, and that is actually responsible for the fight or flight response, for, the, for the, your visual tracking, and for the, for, for the, for the startle reflex. And, uh, and then we have two other brains, which maybe we can talk about later, but, but that, that works very quickly. And in fact, that's, what, that's how we appraise people. That's how we appraise websites we, we use it th- through uh, our um, our reptilian brain and th- that's how we're in advertising when you're t- when, unless it's something of specific interest to you in fact what you're doing when you're looking through a magazine is looking for things that are, vi- are of interest to you and so to capture someone's attention in in what i did which was photographing people my picture would have to be filled with a certain amount of innuendo from body language and facial expressions right right yeah, that's really interesting, and we'll chat a little bit later on about the other, the other two brains. Now, you work with the great Dr. Bandler. What was that like? <laughs> do you want me to you want the truth? Or well, it's yeah, interesting. I, mean, I imagine we've heard of you know, Dr. Bandler through NLP, and I kind of imagine straight away that both of you kind of mirroring each other, and how did you actually, how do you work, and what was he like to work with? What are the, hi- like, it's what are the highlights? Keep it nice. Yeah, he, he doesn't work that way. He, he delivers everything in, in, in story form. He appears to be rambling all over the place except that when you've finished um, certain things, um, he's explained things through stories. It's all stories. He's explained things through stories that, um, that change the way you look at things. He, he does what's called analog marking, and, and, and most speakers do analog marking, whether they call it that or not, which yes. is you use certain gestures once or twice with the words, and then after that you don't use the words anymore. You just use the gestures. Correct. Uh, he does quite a lot of that. Um, he, he's um, uh, an interesting character. I mean, uh, for those of you who, who do or don't know him, I mean, he dresses up like a, the biker from hell, and um, and, and the, he's a sort of cross between uh, Jesus and Rasputin, I think, the way he looks at people and the way he dresses. And he appears to be intolerant, but I don't think he is. He's done some phenomenal work. Uh, I think he's changed the way we all are. But you know something? The thing about NLP is that I get asked quite often about NLP, and, and I say to people, it's a tool, really. Yes. Um, you know, and, 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 and it's really, I use it for two things. One, because I talk a lot about the language we use to, 
to talk to ourselves. In other words, literally how we use language to program our neurology. And the other thing I use it for, which is what it was originally uh, used for, was modeling excellence. It allows you to find someone who's really good at doing something and figure out how they do it. Because chances are, if you ask somebody who's brilliant at something how they do it, they'll just say, I don't know, I just do it. And yeah, so, exactly. Uh, for someone who's a natural... Um, uh, that's a really good, that's a good point. I mean, that's how I came across it um, through a chosen sport was actually yeah through exactly that exactly that circumstance. Yeah, yeah, and and you know and and really that's what it's all about. So it's a tool. And if people say to me, well, I want to do my NLP, I think that's terrific. But what for? Yes, exactly. What's the what why? What are you going to do with it? NLP is the how in a way. Well, it's, that's the um, yes, and that is the the big word in NLP. How do you do something? Not why do you do it. Nobody really cares why you do it. But they want to know how you do it. And so that's what I did in my, in my first book, How to Make People Like You. We looked at people who could connect with other people in social, well, in, in, in kind of general situations. It was so popular, we did one on business, which is very different uh, because in business, uh, well, in, 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 in socially, you can walk away from relationships, but in business, you can't walk away from relationships without probably walking away from your job. And in the third book, How to Make Someone Love You Forever, which is a book I'm very, very proud of, um, we looked at uh, we looked at almost 2,000 people who'd been married for more than 20 years and were still crazy about each other, and figured out what they had. we modelled excellence. We figured out what the common threads were, and then compared it to a test group who consistently mess up in relationships. Wow! Now look, now interestingly enough, you talk about married for 20 years. We're in the era of the baby boomer uh, as well, and especially in Australia down under and other other countries as well. We've kind of got this ageing population. Um, you made a comment in, in the book, in, in the first one, um, you had to, had to make people like you in 90 seconds or less, was the comment you made was that people who connect uh, better live longer. Can you explain Absolutely. a bit more on that? Uh, yeah, I will, and, and, and all the, the data is there in the book. My, incidentally, my books are uh, all about showing and not telling. They're full of stories, and they're, uh, and they're, they're a book written by a photographer. You can see what things look like. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Lisa Berkman did a study. It's called the Alameda County Study. Uh, it was done in Alameda County in California, in which they looked at 7,000 people over nine years, aged between 35 and 65. And uh, regardless of, of the, whether they smoked or they drank of their lifestyle, they looked at this big, this is a huge group to look at. It's amazing. And they, and they, and they discovered that people who did not actively socialize and create new relationships, those who did not, were three times more likely to die of medical illness than the people who did. The reason is actually quite simple. And in fact, if any, any of, your, any of your, your, your listeners have seen that movie with Tom Hanks, Castaway, yes. um, where he was on an island deprived of feedback from other people because it's feedback. More than 72 hours without feedback, uh, physical and, and, and spoken and any kind of feedback from other people our body rhythms go into into become start going what well, we call it diseased or they become chaotic uh, in the movie he he kept his sanity by by inventing a character out of a, 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 a basketball um, called Wilson and he he superimposed a personality onto it and it kept him sane so absolutely we need to connect with other people in order to to balance our body rhythms, uh, etc. In fact, one of the things I talk about in my in my in my in my, in my talks at the end, I say, you know, we can't live without each other. Why do you think children in orphanages in certain parts of the world who have a roof over their head and have food are dying mysteriously? It's because they have no feedback from other people. They don't get hugs. They don't get people listening to them, and their bodies just curl up. Nick, I was just going to ask you about children. Uh, you see a lot of children also invent characters. And talk to characters a lot, and they invent characters, whether it's a, you know a teddy bear or something that they have as well. Is that part of you know trying to invent that feedback? Absolutely, it's a way of it. absolutely. We, we, I, 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 I like to say to the audience that we are born. We're all first of all, we're all born with phenomenal people skills, which is absolutely true. Um, babies do everything right, but we're also born with what I like to call three superpowers. And by, by superpowers, I don't mean things like Superman, like jumping over buildings, because we have machines that do that. I mean, I mean things that machines can't do. We are all born with enthusiasm, which is a superpower. Otherwise, we'd never have made it out. Um, we're all born with curiosity, which is, a, which is a, in all of us. In, in many people, it gets lost in, the, in their formative years uh, by often well-meaning other people who say things like, don't talk to strangers, why do you ask so many questions? And the third superpower is empathy. We're all born with empathy. One day old babies cry when they hear other babies cry. What's that all about? And so this longing 
to empathize with others is absolutely fundamental to, to, to regulating our, our body rhythm. Yeah, it's fantastic. Those, uh, those three are great. Enthusiasm, curiosity, and empathy. It's, uh, it's amazing, isn't it? You do see that so much in, in, the, in young children before we, uh, they all get changed. Which... Well, uh, well, 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 they don't all get changed, but some do. That's what we found when in, the, in, in, the, in the first book when we modeled excellence. Um, we found that, that some people, their natural superpowers, got stomped on, um, again, by well-meaning people by the time they were about to reach puberty. In other words, by the time they learned right. to think without thinking. Yes. Um, by the time we've, you know, we, we've looked, we learned, we, we, we go into the world and we, and we basically do uh, six things. Five of them is we use our senses. We see, we hear, we feel, we touch, we taste, etc. The only other thing we do is, ex is, is put our experiences into words. We process language. That, really, that's what NLP is about. We, pro we, we learn to explain our experiences to ourselves and then to explain them to other people. But what happens is we develop a style of doing it. Some people develop a positive style, and some people develop a negative style. They're both valid, but, but it's, it's the half full, half empty cup thing. Uh, um, and, and in business, uh, you know, which is what we're talking about, yes. people who develop what, we, what I call a positive explanatory style, well, I don't call it, it's, this is from, from what, what, what it's referred to, but people who develop a positive explanatory style, in other words, they wake up in the morning and it's raining, they say, ooh, free car wash, good for the garden, whatever as opposed to someone who wakes up in the morning, sees it's raining, and says, oh, it's raining, it's going to be another lousy day. Someone with a positive explanatory style is great for sales because these people tend to be very good at spotting opportunities. People with a negative explanatory style tend to be very good at management or even CEOs because they become very good at spotting problems. Yes. In a, in a way, optimists make great salespeople, but be very careful. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, pessimists make great CEOs. Optimists make bad CEOs. Uh, pessimists make good CEOs. Optimists, you don't want you don't want an optimist as as a CEO. You you don't really want um, your airline pilot, your dentist, your doctor, and your accountant to be eternal optimists. Uh, you want them to be people who who are more inter interested in in uh, in reason and logic. Yes. And we both need we don't, we both need uh, both those, I guess, in a in a, in a company exactly. to be successful. Yeah. Each is each is one hand clapping. And as a find with small businesses, you've got to wear both those hats, especially when you're starting off. You know, if you're in a home-based business, uh, we have a few of our listeners who are small business owners, and that's a really interesting, the hats you do wear as a small business owner. That's, that is an absolutely a fantastic observation. You're absolutely right. Uh, Nick, um, 90 seconds. Um, how did you come up with 90 seconds? Was it a ballpark? Was it actually uh, through analysis? And I guess there's other circumstances, like we talked about with the magazine ad. That, and I guess as a speaker, you're talking about speaking as well. When you walk yeah. up on stage, is it 90 seconds, or is it a lot less at that point? It, it's it's all a lot less. It's two seconds. Um, however, if I'd have brought out a book called How to Make People Like You, I, look, I had enough trouble with people when I, when I said How to Make People Like You in 90 seconds or less. Right. They said, yeah, right. It's actually two seconds. Yes. The, the first two seconds has everything because it is, it is one reptilian brain, one unconscious set of signals going to another person. Some, there are some very simple things that happen in those first few moments in in the first part of your question, which is in basic face-to-face -face communication. Mm. In our society, in our culture, not in everybody else, else's, but in our culture, um, there, are, there are things that we do in the first uh, two seconds. The number one thing we can do is adjust your attitude. Because I mentioned earlier we have three brains, our second brain is called our limbic system. Our limbic system is where our emotions come from. It is responsible for empathy. We pick up from other people's signals. It is our tendency to, to synchronize with the signals from other people. Um, in other words, if someone's angry, it makes you feel uncomfortable. If they're happy, it makes you feel good. Um, and so, in the, so when you adjust your attitude, the great thing, here's the great thing. Here's the sound bite about attitude. Your attitude drives their behavior. Right, right. And I've seen that you know, with team leaders, especially, and team managers. In a, I guess the other thing I'd like to run off you with that, open plan offices, do you think it has a, I seem to, start, in my experience, see that really really occurring in open plan offices, if there's a, a CEO or a leader comes in with that kind of attitude any particular day, it just rubs off on the rest? Yeah, well, it, absolutely. I mean, there are, I guess there are, there, are, there are upsides to it and there are downsides to it. it uh, it's not my preference, but I spend my time writing and speaking. But... Uh, but getting back for a second about, about about making presentations, which was the second part of your yes. question, going on stage. Um, yeah, I always believe that you have to get the audience. Um, look, if I don't get my audience in the first 10 seconds, they have every right to throw their lunch at me um, and run for the door. 
because we, we absolutely set the mood and we set it with our attitude and, and, and speaking. You set it with your energy level. You know something? People know. The moment someone steps on stage, they know. Their reptilian brain is saying, this is probably going to be good or how far is it to the door? Yeah, yeah. Hey, when's lunch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to leave. The, yeah. the attitude thing was, was a good one. I noticed that I was um, uh, looking at some stuff from Zig Ziglar, the motivational speaker from the US, and, he, and he's got a great saying, which is, you know, your attitude determines your altitude. And yeah. uh, I guess your thoughts are very similar to that. Well, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a very cute cute phrase, I guess. But altitude means uh, how high are you going to go? Uh, absolutely. Look, um, you know, your attitude, face-to-face -face communication, um, as I'm sure everybody knows by now, because of the, 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 the famous study that was done by Albert Morabian uh, called Decoding Inconsistent Communication, is that 55% of all face-to-face -face communication comes from what people see, 38% comes from the tone of your voice, and 7% comes from the, the words you use. Whether those percentages are completely accurate, I have no idea, but they do line up that way, because if you're standing in front of an audience or anybody and you look angry no matter what you're saying or you look bored what they'll take from it is that you're bored no matter what your words are saying yes yeah, correct if you're on the phone and you've got a crummy voice tone but you're saying nice things people will believe your voice tone over the words you use so uh, in fact go figure email in fact i think you and i had a, yeah. a, 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 a slight misunderstanding earlier when you sent me something that was we, you would if you said you were just joking but was it I just, didn't, yes I didn't see you were joking. That's right. Until, that's right. Yeah. Until you told me, yeah. you know, because because go figure. Email is what I tell everybody. Email is devoid of voice tone. It's devoid of body language. If you say to somebody in an email, um, "You drive me crazy," they don't know if it means you make me mad, you make me happy, uh, you make me ha fantasize, or I'm falling in love with you. Yeah. You have no idea because there's no voice tone. It is, it is dangerous, language. isn't it, email? If you're relying upon it just on your own, it's a dangerous oh, area. Oh, absolutely. You have to be. You have to strip your language right down in an email. That's right. Nick, uh, you've got to run off to a speaking engagement, uh, the popular man you are. Um, f finally, the, you talked about a third book. I've mentioned two. The, the, the third book? You've got a third book coming well, my, out? Well, my third book is, is, is my love book, which, we, which I don't actually promote very much. That was my most recent yes. book, How to Make Someone Love You Forever in 90 Minutes or Less, um, which, is a, which is a very provocative title. And people will say, oh, yeah, right, no. But the point of the book is when we looked at, um, when we looked, because I've, my wife and I, we've been married for uh, 35 years, and it was a second marriage for both of us, but we looked at almost 2,000 people who'd been married for more than 20 years, and we found some really simple things. And we also looked at divorce. The number one reason for divorce in the world is that you married the wrong person in the first place. It seems like a no-brainer, so in this book, we looked at fine. In that case, who's the right person? And the fact is, when you find the right person, it doesn't actually take even 90 minutes to fall in love. Uh, or to sow the seeds of love. So the, a lot of the book is about um, finding the right person. I'm now working on um, a series of three more books, uh, that, but they won't be out for about um, until 2007 or eight on second impressions. Because fine, you've, you've, you've appeared in front of someone, they, they feel disposed to trust you, because you know when people like you, they see the best in you. If they don't like you, they see the worst in you. So you, you uh, and they look for opportunities to say yes when they like you. So when you, you've arrived in someone, you've said all the right stuff, there you are, and, um, and, and so now what? And so uh, this is about what to do uh, and how to, uh, how to become top of mind, how to, how to move people uh, in very, very simple ways. And yeah. those will be out um, soon, in about two years. Fantastic. Now, where are, you, uh, where are you speaking internationally, Nick? Where are you off to after you know, next month or so? Um, I'm doing stuff. Uh, I do a, a lot in the States. Um, I'm doing a lot in Europe. Um, today I'm speaking in Canada to a bank. I do uh, a lot of financial institutions. I do a, a lot of hotel chains and uh, uh, all over the place. Uh, actually, um, uh, my website, if, can, if I can give my website. Sure, absolutely. Nicholas, that's my name, nicholasboothman.com, um, where people can uh, go and they can get information about the methodology that we use in all of this and there's, there's um, uh, some free stuff on there yeah including including one page of uh, over a hundred great ways to guarantee you'll stay single forever 
Uh, that sounds fantastic, Nick. It's been fantastic talking to you. Absolutely brilliant. My um, pleasure. I'm honoured to be on your show. Yeah, really, really enjoy it. And we'll, uh, we'll we'll hope to have you uh, maybe up again next time we uh, get to meet you in person. It'll be fantastic. But all the touring you're doing, I'm sure our, our listeners all around the world will uh, at even get to see you in person as well, which will get to the, the three elements of the visual, auditory, and, and hear your words as well. Yes, and kinesthetic. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I was in Australia twice recently. I, I just did a, a three-city tour last month. Uh, I was in. Um, I was in uh, Brisbane, then whizzed across to Perth, and then whizzed back to Sydney, um, and had a great time. Um, yep, great. so uh, be back soon, I hope. Fantastic, right, Nick? That's uh, great to have you on the show, and uh, good luck with your next engagement. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thanks. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.